This is the brand new 2022 Nuke Proof Scout that Nuke Proof just announced today, and we're going to take a first look at it. I've been trying to get a Scout on the channel for three years now. It's probably the most requested bike on the channel, and for good reason. It's very economical, especially as a complete bike. This is the Gen 3 Nuke Proof Scout. It's got different geometry than the last one and some features that I'm really excited about. This is intended to be a do-it-all hardtail. Whether you want to build it up like an enduro shred machine or have it be a light trail bike, you can choose the way you build it up. A lot of the reason we love hardtails is because they're do-it-alls. You can commute to work on it. You can take your kids on a car seat on it. You can run a little XC race on it when you put light parts on it. Or you could go build it up beefy and run an enduro on it. So this frame is available either as a 27.5 or a 29er. They're not the same frame. They're both designed around a 140 mil fork. This is the 29er model. So 29er designed around a 140 fork. The 29er has a little bit longer chainstay to fit that bigger wheel in there. The 27.5s have a more tucked in 422 mil chainstay for a more playful, agile feel. And you can do that with a smaller wheel because it's smaller and it fits in there. So Nuke Proof is known for their extremely competitive pricing for complete bikes. Part of that's because the parent company of Nuke Proof owns Chain Reaction Cycles, the UK's largest online bike parts distributor. So they're able to buy parts in bulk that most other companies can't, and they can get parts cheaper, and that allows them to sell their bikes cheaper. In general, I think you pay about 30% more when you build a frame up. I know some of you are really shrewd shoppers out there, and you can, you can get it cheaper when you do that. But for most people, when you're buying the same exact bike part for part, or as a complete bike, it's about 30% cheaper to just buy the complete bike. But we all know there's a worldwide part shortage right now, and companies are having a hard time getting complete bikes out the door. We saw that with Canfield. They're selling their Yelly Screamy with no drivetrain because they can't get the drivetrain. And so they've got the whole bike ready to go except the drivetrain. So rather than make people wait for the drivetrain to come in, they're selling them without a drivetrain so you can get one sooner. Well, Nukeproof's doing the same thing. They're selling just frames so that you can build up your frame right away. There will be complete builds coming out of this, just like there always have been. But for now, it's only available as a frame as they get the parts in to be able to build the complete builds. This frame retails for $4.99 British pounds, which is very, very competitive. So this frame came in at 5.58 pounds, as you see it with the seat collar, rear axle, and the headset cups pressed in. That's impressive. That's lighter than any steel frame I've had in. And that's where a lot of these aluminum frames come in. We have fully external cable routing, except the dropper. The dropper pops in here, pops out on the non-drive side, and then back into the seat tube. We've got a shorter seat tube than the last generation. It kinks later, so you can get a longer dropper in there. Another cool thing we've got is a 180 mil post mount disc brake. I love that. I've talked about it before on other bikes. We're starting to see that where most people running these are running at least a 180 mil rotor these days. And this means we don't have to run an adapter. We just bolt our caliper right up to it and it's ready for 180 mil. We have a threaded bottom bracket. We have ISCG tabs if you want to run a chain guide or a bash guard. We've got a water bottle mount in here and a tool accessory mount under here. It also has SRAM's universal derailleur hanger. We saw that on the Santa Cruz Chameleon. I've seen that on a couple other bikes now. It's trickling into hardtails. The universal derailleur hanger means you can go into any shop and no matter what frame you have, if it has a universal derailleur hanger, it's universal and you can just buy that derailleur hanger. So now shops only have to stock one derailleur hanger that'll work for all bikes. That's a great standard that we're starting to see. We've got some nice rubberized chainstay protection and a rubberized down tube pad right here. I actually love that idea, especially here in Sedona. I get a lot of baseball sized rocks to the bottom of the down tube. One other cool thing that Nuke Proof has done is all the parts from your old Scout will transfer over to the new Scout. Same exact standard, same wheel size, same threaded bottom bracket, same headsets, all this stuff. Same with the Mega Giga Reactor, all those Nuke Proof bikes, you can take those parts and throw them on here and it'll be ready to go. That's huge, and I'm so glad Nukeproof thought of that. This is the smallest 29er they make. It's a medium. And for some reason, Nukeproof has always had short reaches on their bikes and slack seat angles. 
And even though this bike is longer and lower and slacker than the previous generations, it's still not as long as a lot of bikes right now. Like usually a medium comes in at a 450 mil reach and the seat angle, at least on paper, effective seat angle is 74 degrees. That's quite slack for a brand new model that was just released. Because we're seeing stuff like that Yelly Screamy had, it was steeper than 76 degrees. It had a 450 mil reach. It was just a little bit longer. Nuke proofs a little bit hesitant to just go full on bleeding edge right now. And so they're just slowly, gradually working toward it. So I could probably go medium or large. They recommended a medium for me and I'm fine with that. And usually that little bit shorter reach gives me a little bit more playful ride whereas the longer 450 to 460 mil reach for my size makes it planted and stable for chunky fast downhills at the expense of being harder to get on the back wheel. We've got chain stays that grow with the size of the frame. I love it when companies do that. That means it's gonna ride the same whether you're on a medium or an extra large. So in this generation, the seat angle is one degree steeper than the V2 frame. Uh, the reach is a little bit longer. I love that the that the seat tube is shorter because I could actually size up now and still run a 150 mil dropper. Before I was always stuck between, I wanted the reach of the large with the seat tube of the medium. And now we can do that with that shorter seat tube. Also the head tube changes based on the size. So larger sizes get a taller head tube to help it have appropriate stack. There's something really approachable about this bike. It's inexpensive. It's got good geo. You can build it up however you want, and it can do a lot of things, at least on paper. And there's, you know, I, I review $5,000 frames in here sometimes, and that's exciting and that's fun, and there's definitely a place for those in the world. But for a lot of people, the hardtail is the budget bike that dollar for dollar you get more fun on than anything else. And I think the Nuke Proof Scout really embraces that. You can kind of just build it up to bash it around and and not worry if it gets a scratch on it and just go play on your bike and forget about glamour shots and Instagram likes and how cool people think your bike looks and just go ride. And there's there's a freeing element to that when your bike is not a $10,000 piece that you're worried about getting stolen or getting scratched or crashing. And, and having a hardtail that's an everyday daily driver that gets knocked around, there's something really rewarding about that. I will always have a soft spot in my heart for those boutique $3,000 tie frames that just are gorgeous works of art that are handmade. But for most of us, having an everyday driver that's that's got all these features is gonna be a lot more appealing and a lot more affordable. Okay, enough talk about building this bike. Let's actually build it. I'm gonna throw my favorite parts on it and then we're gonna throw it on the geometer. We're gonna weigh it and we're going to see what this bike's all about and get it prepped for the ride review. So when you buy these frames, they come with a seat collar, they come with a headset and the rear axle and everything else you have to source yourself. That's like most frames. We're gonna see if I can fit my 9.8 fall line in here. Ooh, this is a 175 mil. That might actually fit. So that comes to here. It doesn't bend till later. So let's see if it fits. Oh, it stops right there. No, oh, it's about a centimeter short. For some reason, it's stopping right here. I don't know why, because the tube still goes straight. I don't dare shove it in anymore. All right, I'm gonna have to measure to see if that's gonna be enough. A lot of people will ask me, hey, can I fit a 170 mil dropper in that frame? I can't tell you on all of my frames, and every dropper is different, but you need to not just take account into how much it will fit in there. You have to take into account to how tall a 175 is and if that's, you know, even if it fits in the frame, you still need to add 175 mil of travel up here. And if your seat's way up here, yeah, it fits in the frame, but it's way too tall for you. So think about it a little bit differently and you gotta take some measurements and learn how all that works. I think I'm gonna throw my 150 on here. Darn, I would have loved to fit that 170. And it, it wants to, like this stays straight, but for some reason it's it's stopping in there. I love being able to run a 175. Now Nuke Proof claims this will fit a 29 by 2.6 with UK mud clearance. We're gonna see if a 2.8 is gonna fit in here. That's my goal on these first looks is to see just how much clearance there is when we go over the recommendation. 
Because if a 2.8 fits in here, you know a 2.6 is going to be zero problem. So this is a 29 by 2.8. This fits with Arizona clearance. <laughs> it doesn't fit. My goodness, that's cool. It doesn't, I don't, I wouldn't do it for the UK. I mean, you might be able to, but let me show you. So that's about four mil clearance right there on the drive side and about four mil clearance on the non-drive side. And that's probably got eight mil. Bravo, Nuke Proof. I'm impressed. Fitting a 29 by 28 when it's not even made for that is really, really impressive. I might have to run it as a 29 by 28 sometime. I love this tire size, the cushion, the grip, especially in our loose technical rocky climbs that we have here i love 29 plus you know i do that's why i designed my binary maniac around 29 plus now i know a lot of you are nerds like me and you like to get experimental so this is a 27.5 by 3.0 we're gonna see if this fits because i know you're gonna ask and i love that you ask and that you care about stuff like this most of you are not crazy like me and run full 3.0s you run 2.8s this is rubbing I think a 2.8's gonna be close. Tons of clearance on the drive side, but zero clearance on the non-drive side. It's actually rubbing in a certain spot. I need to chew this wheel up. 27.5 by 2.8, maybe. 2.6, yeah. I actually feel like the 29 by 2.8 has more clearance than this does, despite being a 29. All right, we're gonna set this up with 29 by 2.3 on Nuke Proof Horizon wheels. Take a look at this dropout area. That's missing a lot of material. I don't know if that's to save weight or to have a potentially flex compliant ride. We will see if it is a compliant ride, that might be why. Now when building up this scout frame, there's two things I'm not very crazy about. One are these plastic grommets for where the um, cables come in and out. I like plastic better than the rubber ones but I really like uh, the metal ones with the little uh, threaded insert to hold them in. These remind me of the Ragleys. In fact, it shouldn't surprise me because Nuke Proof and Ragley have the same parent company. They just uh, are a little bit rattly, a little bit cheap, and here in Arizona where we get lots of sun, I'm worried these are gonna break and be brittle. Now, in the UK where you get 10 days of sun a year, probably not a problem, but um, yeah, that's one thing that could be improved. They include this foam you put around your cable so it won't rattle around in there. I'm glad they do that. That's the main reason I don't like internal cable routing for droppers is the rattle, especially on a hardtail. I like a quiet bike. So I'm going to be threading this onto my dropper cable inside of there, hopefully to be able to keep it quiet in there. So the foam does a really nice job of keeping it quiet. But when you need to adjust your dropper, it kind of sticks on this and it's hard to slide it through. So if I need to raise my dropper an inch, you really got to just kind of jam it in there. Not the end of the world, but uh, worth mentioning. And yeah, here's that little plastic guy. It's okay, but if you remove it once or twice, they kind of snap and break off and then they're done. Not the end of the world, but worth mentioning. I'm glad they included this foam though, that's really nice. They're better than those rubber grommets that just tear, but I still think there are much better solutions. But that's the difference between a five or $600 frame and like a $1,500 frame. The $1,500 frames usually, but not always, have better little appointments like that. All right, it's all built up. That only took me two hours with filming, which is fast for me. It's a really easy build. I love the external cable routing. We had the one internal cable routing here with the foam in there. No big deal, that's pretty typical. We've got a 140 fork on here. I know I have a ton of steer tube out here, but this is a tiny, tiny head tube. I cut my steer tubes long on all my bikes because they need to be able to fit every bike that comes in for review. And some of my bikes have really tall steer tubes and some don't. I know it's ugly. If this were my bike and I were keeping it, I'd get my stem to the right height and then cut it. But I'm going to need to use this fork on a future review, so I'm leaving it long so it fits every bike that I get. Total weight came in at 29.24. I've got some cool parts on here. I've got my 5Dev cranks. Love these cranks. Made in the U.S. They're super unique. 
and they actually take some of the trail chatter out, which I really like. I've got a video about that if you're interested on whether cranks can be supple or not. I've got a 5% discount code for all of you who are interested in 5Dev stuff. The code is Hardtail Party. I'm running the Nuke Proof Horizon V2 wheels. Love these wheels. These are my control test wheels for all the hardtails that I review so that I can tell how stiff a frame is because I use the same wheels and tires on all of them. I really like that rear rotor that it did not need a spacer. Really clean little build. Um, that's yellow really pops. The frame quality looks really good. Nuke Proof's done a really good job thinking through a lot of the details that a lot of companies don't, like cable routing. There's one or two goofy things like how the, I think this was meant for UK where most people run the rear brake on the left side of the bars. Uh, it's a little bit uh, less than perfect how the shifter comes into here, but from here on back, the cable routing is perfect. The rear triangle is absolutely perfect. Probably the best brake routing I've seen anywhere. And that's one place that a lot of companies don't get it right. Nuke Proof nailed it. There's not a whole bunch of clearance here on this chain ring. I had to run all my spacers on this crank to space it out enough to not rub it. So you might even need like a super boost chain ring to kick that out another three mils. That's probably what I'd do if this were my full-time bike. I'm running a 140 mil Cane Creek Helm. This bike specced for 140 mil. I'm running a one-up composite 35 mil rise bar. So I'm keeping the stem low because this bar does have a fairly tall stack. Running Micro Shift Advent X on here. Wheels manufacturing bottom bracket. Um, 9.8 fall line R dropper with a Paul lever remote. My all-time favorite lever. It's so good for droppers. All right, now it's time to throw it on the geometer. All right, if you're new to the channel, this is my geometer. This is the device I've created to measure actual real-world geometry of hardtails unsagged to see if their geo charts are accurate. Usually they are, sometimes they're way off, so we need to find out. Here All right, head angle, that's everybody's favorite measurement. This measures at 64.5. Bravo, nuke proof, spot on. Let's check the effective seat angle. 74.2. That's pretty slack these days. I'm surprised they didn't go steeper. Maybe the UK where they ride these doesn't have steep enough stuff to need a steeper seat angle. That's pretty old school seat angle. So I would not size up on this bike because the seat angle is so slack, you're gonna need a shorter reach when you're seated to not feel super far away. Interesting. Rear center is 430. Chain stay length is 435. Reach is 435. Yeah, 435 reach. That's pretty short these days. Interesting. Uh, total wheelbase, 1188. Bottom bracket drop, 66 mil. Stack is 637. Not bad. So it's got a small head tube, but because this has a 140 fork, it's running a taller stack than it looks like because of the fork. And I have a theory that that's why a lot of people like over forking their hardtails is because they actually like a tall stack. I don't measure stand over clearance because A, I don't feel like people should be flat footing over their top tube when they get off. You should step off to the side, not jump forward. And B, every company measures it different. Some measure it right here and it's impossible to stand over that because your seat comes to at least here. So it's not a very useful measurement to me. More useful is how much drop I can run for the given frame size. All right, in some ways I'm a little bit surprised about this Geo that it's not a little bit more aggressive, a little more modern, but in some ways I'm not because Nuke Proof has always been on the shorter and slacker seat tube side of things and this frame's no different. So I'm not gonna mistake this for a Yelly Screamy. I don't wanna do too much assumption here. We gotta wait for the bike review when I'm actually on the bike riding it, but I'm assuming it's gonna ride closer to the Ragley Big Al because it's still got a fairly slack seat angle by modern standards, but it's also got a shortish reach at 435. That's that's quite short for a medium. So personally, I might consider sizing up, except that seat angle is so slack that my seated position would be pretty stretched. Geometry is important. It's super important. 
And when we buy online, we have to make all our assumptions based off the geo chart or reviews like this, because most people are never going to be able to throw a leg over one of these. I've never seen a scout in person in all my travels and all my hardtail riding. I've never seen one. And so the chances of, especially in the U.S., someone throwing a leg over one and riding one is pretty low. So we have to go off these geo charts, but we have to be careful because bikes don't always ride exactly how the geo charts suggest. That said, if I had to make an assumption about this based on what we know about it, I assume it's going to feel a little bit compact when standing up, just like the Ragley Big Al. And I assume it's going to feel pretty good sitting down because my distance from the saddle to the bars is, is where I like it. But I feel like the front end might want to lift and wheelie a little bit more. And this might be held back a little bit in technical climbs. We shall see. It's really important not to make too many assumptions, but we have to when we're shopping online. So the next step is for me to take this out and take it on the trails and get it dirty and, and take it on all sorts of different terrain to tell you what it actually rides like instead of assuming. Now, just because I prefer a certain geometry doesn't mean you should and that it's right for you. So it's really important to pay attention to the ride review. Some people prefer a slacker seat angle and I think this is gonna suit them really well. And let's face it, Blake can shred on one of these and I can't, I can't ride like Blake. And so probably not the bike that's keeping me from riding like Blake, it's me. That said, I do have a preference for the geometry that works well for me. And so that's why I mention these things. So just because it's not the most modern, the most cutting edge, bleeding edge, or it's not exactly the numbers that I like to see when I'm designing a bike, that doesn't mean it's bad. The purpose of this channel is for me to ride these bikes and tell you what they ride like so you can know if it fits well for you and your riding style or not. On my ride reviews, I'm trying to describe the ride feel so you can be educated before you purchase. My goal is to ride every modern hardtail on the planet so that you can have a great database to look at when deciding which hardtail to buy. I've ridden over 75 modern hardtails in the last four years, and I've made notes about all of them and I've made review videos about all of them. If you wanna dive deeper and pick my brain and compare how bike A rides to bike B, or if you want my recommendation for you and your riding style and your budget, I have a bike consultation service where I do that. That's my main job. It's a monthly fee, you pay for that month, we get to chat back and forth via email, and I give you a list of bikes that I think would fit really well for you. You ask questions, we go back and forth. It's a consultation service. And I have helped so many people avoid buying the wrong bike for them. And I've been able to share my knowledge and experience riding all these different bikes with so many different people. So if you're about to drop two, three, four thousand dollars on a hardtail you've never ridden, it's worth the small fee for that month to pick my brain and see if I think it'd be a good fit for you. If you're interested in that, sign up in the link in the description below. If you're not interested in that, feel free to keep enjoying my free reviews. I make them so that you can be more educated and to spread the stoke of all things hardtail. I am so excited for the changes of this Nuke Proof Scout. I think they've done a lot of wonderful things. And I think this could be a really great bike for somebody who's on a budget or someone who doesn't want to pour a whole bunch of money into a hardtail that they might use as their winter bike or a loner or a beater or something like that. And I think a bike like this could fit that niche very well. I still think there's a place in the world for the beautiful hand-built works of art hardtails out there. This is not that. This is the everyman's rider that just wants to go out and ride and have a good time with his buddies, and that's what this channel is all about. It's been fun checking out this bike with you. I'd love to hear your questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains, and you're invited.